Hey guys, Deviator here. In this video we're going to go over setting up a basic particle system that we can use in a future video. Well, let's get started. First thing we want to do is, uh, I'm just in the particles folder, I'm just going to right click particle system. I'm going to name this P underscore ring. Go ahead and open that up. When you open that up, um, it opens up another editor. This editor is called Cascade. This is where you can create and edit particle systems. If you've never seen this before, um, it can be a little intimidating. There's lots of settings that can be changed and buttons to click. Uh, so hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a little bit better understanding of the editor and how particle systems work. So the first thing we want to do is we want to change the sprite that's being emitted by the particle system. So if you go under required, um, you'll see a little tab here when you can apply a material. We're just going to hop back into the content browser under the materials folder. And we're going to get a material we created in the last video called Ring Material. Um, we'll just hop back into Cascade and we'll apply that. And you can see once you apply that, um, the sprites that are being emitted change to that ring that we created. So that's all we need to do for required. Now we're going to go under Spawn, Spawn, Rate, Distribution, and we're going to set that constant value to 0. Then we're going to come down to Burst. And you can see right now it has zero elements, so we're going to add an element. We'll open up element zero. For our count value, we'll change that to one. And our count low, we're going to change that to one as well. Uh, now we're going to hop down to lifetime. We want to change this distribution to float uniform. And we're going to set our min and our max values both to one. Now we're going to hop down to initial size. Uh, we want to change this distribution to a vector uniform. And for our maximum value, we're going to set X, Y, and Z to 25. And we're going to set our minimum value to 25 as well. Now we're going to hop down to initial velocity. First thing we want to do is change this distribution to vector uniform. And we'll leave the min and the max values where they are. Uh, if you come down to start velocity radial, we will just leave those settings where they are. Those should work right where they're at for now. Uh, so we'll come to the color over life tab. First thing we want to do is for our distribution, we want to change that to a vector constant curve. And we need two elements here, so we will click that plus sign twice. So for zero, we're going to leave our in value set to zero. Our out value we're going to change from 1 for x, 1 for y, and 5, 12 on z. Um, if you scroll down here to point 1, open that up. We're going to change our in value to 1. Our out values are going to be 1 for x, 1 for y, and 1 for z. Uh, if you continue to scroll down a little farther, you will see alpha over life. Um, we just want to make sure the distribution for that is float constant curve and we have two points uh, point zero our in value is going to be zero and our out value is set to one which they are by default and point one our in value is set to one and our out value is set to zero which they are as well now we're going to come over here and we're just going to right click and we're going to come down to size size by life we'll click on that and we just want to make sure that's set to a vector constant curve uh, we're going to need two points, so just add two points. Point zero, uh, our in value is going to be set to zero, and our out value, we're going to set that to one for x, one for y, one for z. Now if we come down to point two, our in value is going to be set to one, and we're going to set x, y, and z all to ten. Alrighty, so now you can see when we change that size by life, um, what that essentially does is we created a sprite that grows over time. And you can play around with those values and uh, change them to whatever you need. Um, the next thing we're going to do here is if you scroll around in the uh, preview window, you'll see that the sprite always faces you. Um, we can change that if you want to lock it in a specific uh, access. So if you come down, right click, come down to orientation, lock access. Uh, we'll click on that and we'll just uh, right now set to none. We'll lock this one on X. 
And I know a good way to see how that works is if you come up to the emitter here and just right click, go to emitter, duplicate emitter. Um, we'll come to lock access on the second one we created and we'll change that to a Y. Um, now you can see um, how they lock in different accesses and you can play around with this and set them to different angles and whatnot. Um, for the time being we're just going to set that back so they're both on X. Um, now that we have our basic emitter set up, one thing we can do here is let's change the size on the second emitter. So we'll come to initial size here and for our max value X, Y, and Z we're going to change that to 17 and I'm going to do the same for minimum as well. Uh, and you can see that we have uh, two different sprites that are growing. Um, we kind of get a little cool little effect there. Uh, let's change the color on that second one as well. So if you come down to color over life, um, under point zero, let's change the out value of Y to 512 and Z to 1. And you can see that uh, changes the color. A good way to look at this X, Y, and Z values um, look at them as they are RGB on the color scale. Um, if you know anything about color theory or whatnot, if you've used Photoshop, you'll understand all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that'll be good for this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and we will uh, apply this particle system to uh, an in-game event we got going on. So we'll see you guys then. Thanks.